In a world where decentralization becomes more and more popular, the authenticated transfer protocol brings us a new way to think about social networks. And the ad protocol is gaining some traction online, mainly through the social media app called Blue Sky. And there's so much to talk about it. So let's dive deeper into it, understand how it works, what it actually provides, and how Blue Sky uses that protocol for all of its content. So what actually is the authenticated transfer protocol? Now I'm on their website here and they have so many documentation and um, guides here that you can use. But basically they describe some of the features like self-authenticating data and identity, designed for big world use cases, delegated authority over application layer, reuse of ex existing data models from the web protocol, family and network primitives from the web platform. But how does this actually work? Well, there's a few things to understand and a few kind of key things that Ad Protocol uses to get the data out there in the world to authenticate that the data is authentic and to connect all the data together. Now, when I say decentralized, usually people think about uh, blockchains and crypto, but even though this is similar, it's not kind of the same. The way that Dan Abramov, who works at Blue Sky and works on the Ad Protocol, talks about it is in the beginning with Web 1.0, we had all of these websites where people would post their data like blogs and stuff and then google came along and they aggregated all of the data so people can search for something and find answers and find these websites because before that nobody was able to get aggregated data from the whole internet but now google does that and the ad protocol is very similar to that it allows you to put your data somewhere on your website and have something else that aggregates the data and you can then use it for whatever you want now this is all very generic, so let's actually understand how this works. Now, the protocol structure here is defined as follows. The identity, which is the account co control, and is rooted in stable, decentralized ID identifiers. And this can be rapidly resolved to determine the current service provider location and cryptographic keys associated with the account. This is basically the ID of the user, but in a centralized way. And I'll come back to these, and this will all make much more sense when I get to some examples after. Now, then we have the data. And the data is the public content, which is stored in content addressed and cryptographically verifiable repositories. And these are the repositories of your DID. So every, all the content is gonna live under your DID, kind of like a repository. So when you post something, it's like go up to this repository, and other people that listen to these repositories and get the data they can use it then after. Then we have the network. Now this is using the current web standards and basically um, HTTP client server and server to server APIs, which are all described with lexicons and I'll get to the lexicons after. I'm not sure if this all makes sense, but there's nothing here that I wanna go to. And this is Emily Liu, I think I'm saying that correctly. Hopefully I said that correctly, but the way that she describes Blue Sky is as an open network. This illustration here is what basically describes the current social media network. So in Instagram, you post your pictures, you post your videos and whatnot, and the content all lives in Instagram. So this is Instagram's house and you have a room in there where you post your content. Same with X or uh, Twitter and same with Reddit or YouTube and all the other social media networks. They own the house. You just have a room where you post your content and they aggregate all of the users, all of the rooms basically, and show a feed of the content to other users. Now with Ad Protocol, you own the house and then you can post different kinds of content for different social media networks. You can have a Bluecast room where you post posts for Bluecast. Blue you have a Blue Sky room where you post all the posts and likes and comments for Blue Sky, but essentially this all lives in your repository. Hopefully this analogy makes sense because that, it did for me, it basically describes how the ad protocol changes the way we are gonna see social media networks. And that's why this is called open network because you own the house, all of the content from each rooms is aggregated somewhere and it's being used from different apps. And now we're back to the way that the web worked before. Everyone's posting their own content on their own repositories or websites and something else needs to aggregate this data and pull it into an app so other people can discover it. And Blue Sky does exactly that. So there is this Fire Sky, uh, basically event fire holes, I think it's called, where all of the content for from all of the DADs, this is basically what a DAD looks like, 
all of it is aggregated into one fire hose and this is the blue sky fire hose so all of the posts for blue sky are pulled into this one place and you can listen to events here and get your data if you want to and that's how blue sky I get all of the posts into one place. I think there are 20 million users or 20 plus million users on Blue Sky now. There's a talk from Dan Abramov explaining that when there were 6 million users and probably like half a million active users on Blue Sky, this wasn't a big um, server. It was basically like 150 bucks a month user that was aggregating all the different feeds from all different repositories for the users and caching it somewhere. Then the Blue Sky app uses it. But this is uh, essentially how that kind of event stream is gonna look like and you can subscribe to this and listen to all the events you want to. Now the best thing to show how this works is this open source app that's uh, add proto browser and someone built this to basically use the add protocol and basically make sense to how this works. So this is the DID doc. This basically describes the user is and this is the ID. So because this is not really user friendly uh, this is attached to the domain so people can identify users by the domain but essentially this resolves to this id this is the uh, repository for dan abramov for example and here we can see uh, some data so we have did protocols and what it's known as we have the verification method which is how the do domain is signing the data and then we have the service which is basically where the data is hosted so you can see that dan hosts his data on the blue sky server and these are personal data servers which you can use if you want to or you can use ho the blue sky host and there's some history here from the did um, basically and you, if you sign up to blue sky it's gonna give you a subdomain of uh, blue sky social and we can see that the alias was changed from blue sky social to dan abramov and here are all the personal data server collections and this is basically all the posts the likes the repost and everything that you need for the data in the app and you can see here that these are signed as app.bluesky.actor.profile or app.bluesky.feed.like and this is all the different objects which are defined with their own types so we can see here that Dan liked someone else's post and this is the URI where that post is linked to and this is the actual post that Dan liked if I go back to Dan and we can see all of his posts um, that he's made if it's a reply or not if there's a parent and this all is basically a json data which is all put in that fire hose and then blue sky aggregates it and shows it into the app and i can probably go here go to dance and here we can see that his latest post was is on the backlog and this is the parent post and it's all basically making sense so here's another user that basic that holds their own data we can see here that in the ser uh, personal data server they have their own Person data server so they can host their data this is basically what the house analogy comes to this would be this person's house and these collections are basically the blue sky room and you can see here dan has some other collections here as well from other apps this is basically an app for events this is basically a meetup app where you can post your events and people can log in with their blue sky social let's try and now that i've logged in here I can say that I'm interested in an event and now if I go to my so this is my repository I refresh here so now I can see the small single events collections and this is my profile which basically doesn't have any info and then we have uh, RSVP records and these are all the RSVPs or you see here that I've marked as interested for this event and this is all the information for that event now this is pretty cool um, because all the data is decentralized, it's all out there. And I'm not hosting my own data. I'm using the Blue Sky servers, you can see here. But I could be hosting my data. I'm probably gonna try to experiment with that in the future. And this is how all that comes together. So these are the collections, and all the collections have defined types that the users can define. So this app defines their own types for RSVPs. And this basically is just JSON object that can link to other data or not this is a great app that i really like and really helps to make sense how that protocol works and it is pretty cool to see a different way to think about social media networks now this is not the first um, new social media network protocol there's activity pub which is quite popular and it's built for some time now but uh, mastodon uses it and i think thread supports it i'm not sure in which way
but this is basically kind of like a pub sub kind of relationship but it goes both ways i don't really want to get too much into it probably i could in a different video but actor sends messages to postcode and outside world can read messages from actor and then it can go back um, to the user and this is also promoting the open network kind of idea now i want to talk about a little bit more about blue sky a blue sky looks very similar to Twitter, but it uses the ad protocol. There's a few differences from Twitter, obviously. So all the data is public, it's open source. The app is also open source, the front end and the back end. And there's a few cool features that I like. So because this is a new app, they've created starter packs. So here we can see a, every person can create their own starter pack. And this is um, the Scottish Technology Club, which I'm a part of here in, in Scotland. And they had their own starter pack for all the people that have hosted or joined events from um, the events that Scottish Technology Club organizes. And we can see here all the people that are in this starter pack. You can follow all of them at once, which is great. That's one of the cool features and really helps start your profile and follow all the people you want to follow. So there's block list and this is basically um, a list of users that are for whatever reason you want to block them you can subscribe to this list or like basically block all the accounts in this list or mute accounts which is kind of cool um i can see this really going both ways like it can be really useful and it can be kind of harmful to the creators but this does really bring the vibe of early twitter and how twitter used to work back in the day where it's basically just people chat to each other the other cool thing is you can get your own um algorithm so you have the discover and following here but you can basically add someone else's algorithm yeah and this is a feed for all the people that have been ratioed in their posts in the last seven days and you, you can pin this to your home feed and you basically have access to this here probably didn't choose the best one to add here but but basically you can create your own algorithm of the things that you want to see and you can call that algorithm and publish it on blue sky and add it to your home page um which is quite cool really because you all the other networks decide the algorithm for you and this here you can choose the algorithm for yourself which is amazing now, i think uh, blue sky is a great social media network i'm excited to be there and use it but but i really geek out on the ad protocol and i'm really excited to see where it goes i think it's very early stages now blue sky has been around for a couple of years i think but really uh, it was invite only for a while and recently they opened the sign ups for everyone and They've been flooded with like 20 million users, probably more now, but um, there's a lot of users that switch from other social media networks, especially Twitter to Blue Sky. And the way it works is really interesting to me. I It was fun to dive deeper and understand how this works. I will play around more with the ad protocol. I probably want to do some stuff on my own um, and maybe define my own collections and see how, what I can do with that. But um, I think it's pretty cool to try and change something on a scale like this. Like I haven't seen many um, internet protocols being defined recently. Like I know about HTTPS and FTP and whatever. But seeing one that's gaining popularity in this way, I think it's great. And also the idea of owning your own content and then having other apps use it is also great. So I'm excited to see where this goes. Excited to see where the Blue Sky app goes. But yeah, that's been pretty much it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Enjoy the rest of the happy coding. Bye.